Hello everyone, my name is Katie. I am the introverted reader and we're back with video number two of the day. Um, yes, this is another episode of Trope Talk, which is a little series on my channel where I pick out a trope from this Jack Skellington mug that I have here and we just sit and discuss. Um, I'll leave last week's episode linked down below as well as my previous video. Um, my review for Kingdom of the Wicked, which was our um, introverted reader book club pick. So what have you got buzzing inside of your skull this week, Jack? I actually managed to get a couple more tropes in here. So we've got this one. Right. Thank you, Jack. See you next week. All right, here we go. What have I got? Oh, Broken Boys. Oh. <laughs> Um, okay, interesting. So I guess the broken boy kind of refers to your male lead in the book that um, is snarky all the time and could be quite rude to everyone around them, but it's just like underneath, oh, I never knew my father. Like that's usually the way it goes, um, particularly in a lot of young adult. And you guys know, I read a lot of young adult. I'm not ashamed. And uh, I do come across a lot of broken boys. And I won't lie, a lot of those broken boys um, are some of my favorite characters that I've ever read um, in books. One broken boy in particular that comes to mind is Magnus Tremora from the Fallen Kingdom series. Now, the Fallen Kingdom series is full of tropes in itself. And Magnus is like the epitome of broken boy with father issues. But I can't help it. I love him. <laughs> I love him so much just because I mean as I mean obviously when you first meet him he is very very rude he's very brooding he's a little bit scary but then as the series goes on and his walls start to break down like you see the person underneath like at first he's like the ice cold prince and then as it goes on obviously you um get to know him a little bit better and like I won't lie I love me a broken boy I really do <laughs> Like, it's like a broken boy is almost like my guilty pleasure. Like, I just feel uh, a protectiveness for them, if that makes any sense. Like, I'm just like, oh, you poor sweet bean. Come here. Come to Mother Dust. I will protect you. Like, I just, I don't know what it is. I just, I like them a lot. Like, um, I know there are some broken boys out there. <laughs> Christian Grey, <laughs> Edward Cullen, that um, are low-key problematic and that we don't talk about in this house. We don't stand in this house. Um, that kind of like are the broken, but like, they don't want to change, if you know what I mean. Like a lot of the broken boys that I read, like, yes, they're broken. Yes, they um, can be jerks a lot of times, but through character development, they learn to um, sort of break down those walls a little bit and start being a little bit more honest about their feelings, which we appreciate. Obviously, like I said, Magnus Demora is one. Jace Herondale, funnily enough, is another example, because whenever you first meet him, he can be a little bit of a D-bag. But as the Mortal Instruments goes on and as he grows as a person and as a character, you get to see the um, real life um, him underneath it all. But like, obviously there are some, like I said, Christian Grey, Edward Cullen, that um, just don't seem to change, that seem just very sort of set in their ways. Cause like, <laughs> cause like Mr. Grey says numerous enough times that he's 50 shades of effed up, but he doesn't see, but like, he never ever seems to want to change that. He never ever seems to want to fix himself. Like he always like, it's it's almost as if he kind of uses that as a way to emotion, like he uses it as a way to emotionally manipulate. And through, like through that whole series, we're supposed to see it as something that's attractive, which is problematic in itself, which is another trope that we could go on and on and on about, but you know, um, but um, anyway, like I said, I mean, I, I don't, I like a broken boy every now and then. Like, I, I can't help myself. Like, I just, like, I mean, the, I mean, obviously there are, like, obviously some, like I said, that are problematic. And that is a trope that we could talk about till we're all blue in the face. But in my experience, for the young adult ones that I've read, 
yes, there's some I want to slap around the head. And like, when I, yes, whenever I first met Jace Herondale, I wanted to knock his stupid head against the wall because he was being a complete utter jerk. But then, like I said, character development, like this is, this is where it all comes down to, okay? It's whenever the broken boy gets some character development or he finally like, um, or he finally sort of sees the error of his ways, you know, that's when I um, really, really stand it. But like, obviously there are some broken boys in some books out there that, like I said, try and use their, um, like sort of like using their trauma as a way to like emotionally manipulate and that's not okay. And also, um, I had something that I was gonna say there, but I can't remember what it was. Yes, there's some that like to emotionally manipulate and as well, oh, I remember what I was gonna say. Um, there are some where the broken boy almost is leaning on the um, potential like female lead a lot to like be his like emotional crutch or like for her to be someone who um, the only way that he can change is if she's around and like she's like his hero, his savior and like um, without her around he would just go back to being a dick. Do you know what I mean? Like. Um, that kind of happens in Divergent a little bit. Um, I feel like Four really, really just leaned on Triss way too much. And like, I mean, that's one of the many problems I had with, <laughs> with, uh, well, it's one of the many problems I have with those books, but we'll not get into that. Um, but yeah, like I said, yes, there are some that are problematic, but I mean, I would be lying if I said that A Broken Boy wasn't my guilty pleasure because it totally is. And like, I can't help myself. <laughs> anyway. That is it for this week's trope talk. Thank you so much for watching. I will leave last week's link down below. Also linked down below will be my review for Kingdom of the Wicked, which I reviewed before filming this video. So my throat's starting to hurt, so I'm gonna stop talking. So Twitter, Instagram down below as always. Subscribe if you haven't already done so and ring the bell so that you know for when my next video is coming, which hopefully will be soon. I think I might post my favorites of 2020 um, pretty soon because I see a lot of people doing that. So yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye.